So in this one, we're going to look at a plane, we're going to look at a line, and we're going to see where they intersect, and also the angle between the line and the plane. So, something like that. A plane, a line passing through it, and the point at which the line passes through the plane, that's the point of intersection that I'm looking for. Now, the way to do it is actually pretty straightforward. As long as you remember what a vector equation of a line is, and what a vector equation of a plane is. Now, a vector equation of a line isn't just like a vector. It's an infinite number of vectors pointing at these points. And the equation of a line just tells you where that, uh, that vector is at any given point. Okay, what about the equation of a plane? Well, the equation of a plane is an infinite number of um, vectors going to that plane. So, we have a line that is an infinite number of vectors. We have a plane that is an infinite number of vectors. So, it's just a simultaneous equation. We need to know when is the vector equation of the line pointing to that dot, and when is the vector equation of a of the plane pointing towards that same dot. So, a question like this, we have the equation of a line, we have the equation of a plane, and we want to find where they intersect, relies on this understanding that this R is this infinite number of lines, and we want to find that one, that line from that point to where they intersect, and that this R is this infinite number of lines to the whole plane, and we want to know this specific one. So, it's a simultaneous equation. If we sub this, which is this line, into this, which is this plane, we will find that particular vector. So, I've taken this equation and subbed it in for r into our plane equation. That's this bit here equal to 2. Now, I want to find the dot product. I just need to rearrange this a little bit so it's more i, j, k component. So I've done that, but I've also put them into column vectors. So this bit here is 3 plus t in the i, negative 1 plus 2 in the j's, and negative 1 minus t in the k component, and this is 1, 1, 2. And now I can do my dot products here just by multiplying, 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 and adding them together. So when I do that, I get a bunch of uh, stuff cancelling out, and I just get a t value equal to 2. Now that means that when uh, the parameter is equal to 2, or when time is equal to 2, then that's when they're going to meet. And so now I just need to sub 2 into whichever, uh, let's say into the line here, I just need to sub t into the line, and then that will tell me what my point is. Just so you don't get too confused here, I'm going to sub t into the line, but I'm going to sub it into this form of the line, just because that's going to spit out a nice i, j, and k component here. And so when I do that, I get my point of intersection, 5, 3, negative 3. This is the thing we've been trying to find all along, and that's how we found it. It's a simultaneous equation, just using vectors. Feels right. Um, now, how are we going to find the angle between them? So I'll just tidy this up a little bit. So I have this uh, plane and a line passing through it. And for this example, I had it passing through at 5, 3, negative 3. And then the question is, what is the angle that this line is making with the plane? I need a concrete something to show you. So this will do the job. Here's a piece of wood. Don't worry about all the holes and stuff in it. Now, uh, the line, so the wood might look a bit like that on a weird sort of angle. The line might also be on a weird sort of angle, and we might have something that looks like that. Okay, and then we want to know the angle there. Now, finding the angle between the plane and the line is actually really hard. But what is really, really easy is finding the angle between a line and a normal. And if I know the angle between a line and a normal, then I just need to subtract 90 to get the angle between the line and the plane. So that's what we're going to work with. So I'm going to find the angle between them. Now, need to really just consider a couple of bits here. Uh, we need to consider this bit here because that's the direction that the line is traveling in. And we need to consider this bit here because that's the normal 
to the plane. And if I find the angle between those two things, the direction the line is traveling in, and the normal to the plane, it's going to be really easy to then find the angle between the line and the plane. So how do I find the angle between two vectors? Dot product. So the dot product between the, the uh, direction and n, the normal, is equal to this, 1, 2, negative 1, 1, 1, 2. But it's also equal to the magnitude of this, the magnitude of this, and the angle between them. And the angle between them is the thing I'm trying to find. So I'm going to do the dot product of that. I'm going to find those magnitudes, and then uh, we'll rearrange from there. All right, so it's coming out pretty neatly. The dot product of those is 1. The magnitude of that is root 6. The magnitude of that is also root 6. And we have cos theta there. I can divide this side by root 6 times root 6, which is 6. And I can take the inverse of cos on that side to find out what theta is. So I get an answer of 80.4 degrees. Uh, now what, am I, what have I done? I've got my normal vector here, my plane there. right? I've got a line that's going along here and making an 80 degree angle with that normal. Which means that the angle between the line and the plane is uh, the complement of that. So 90 minus 80.4, which is 9.6 degrees. All right, we found an intersection point. It's a simultaneous equation. We found an angle between a plane and a line, and it all comes down to finding the normal and then doing the obvious step after that. It's all coming together. In the next video, I'm going to take a look at angles between two planes and intersection lines between two planes.